So yeah, burnout. Okay. So <clears throat> I usually recommend my students to follow a pattern of like consistent behavior. So for instance, drawing, uh, drawing every day, right? Because here's the thing, man, like when you, when you have a system that is entirely based around, um, I don't know, like you just have a system that's entirely based around, uh, like working, grinding it out, like for a whole day or whatever, or for a week or months. And then, and then you just have a time where you just relax. Um, yeah, you, you're probably going to procrastinate a little more if you haven't built a strong foundation of, of working it, working it out. Like, I feel like, uh, when pressure is back on top of you again, you're going to work again, but that's the problem is that you only, you have to have pressure. And I'm trying to say like, you should, you should try to build a, 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 a system where it's, you don't rely on pressure. And what's great about this, what's great about this is that when you do have pressure, you've already kind of built in a situation where you're, you're able to work a lot anyway. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, so, so like, think of it like this. When you're motivated and you're inspired or you're whatever, the fire burns hot. But then eventually the fire dies down, the furnace. Okay. Yeah. And then when that fire burns out, um, where is its base state at? And if that base state is just back to embers, then that's what it's going to go back to. So let me, let me demonstrate mm -hmm. it to you visually. So imagine that this is just little fireplaces. Mm -hmm. And so being inspired, you get like pff, raging fire, right? Yeah. Or you have a lot of work to do before the end of the week. But eventually the fire dies down. So look, my question is, what is that base state at? And if it's just this, like just barely anything coming out of it, that's what's going to go back to, your base. But if you have a base mm -hmm. where it's just constantly raging the fire, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to be inspired on some days. But even when you're not, you're still kind of going at it. Uh, and so how do you do that well you got to just start doing it you know you just got to like do a thing like give yourself small things like for instance um give yourself uh uh i don't know something along the lines of like one hour a day minimum yeah. you know what i mean yeah like one hour a day like you're just gonna draw something you're gonna learn something you may not be drawing mm -hmm. anything important you know you may not draw anything um of value you're just doing it you're just getting that time in and then once you start to get that time in then you start to challenge that so you know what i'm going to try to start practicing a little bit more of my fundamentals or i'm going to try to practice more designs uh, you know what i mean yeah and then yeah. you say you know what i can probably put in two hours i don't have to just put in one hour you know, and then you start saying, you know, I'm going to put in three hours. I'm going to do one hour in the morning, one hour at night, and then one hour in the middle of the day. Amazing. Yeah, like, even compared to before, like, especially, like, a few months before I took your, took up your class and, like, crunching for the deadline before that, I, like, I actually got into, like, some, the, into, like, a depression period because I have no idea what, what I should work on. Like, I have, like, it feels like you have no purpose so i've it's actually better if i have to like have a deadline to go for or like an assignment going on yeah yeah but it's... think about what you just said without that mm -hmm. though you go into like depression and you have anxieties right yes so you should yes. fix the, there's like a i i call what you were talking about a paper mm -hmm. towel solution paper towel yeah so imagine you have a leaking faucet, a faucet that's leaking. Mm -hmm. And the way that you're fixing it is using paper towels. Uh, Do you understand? That's, that's 
Yeah, yeah. So what does that mean? Yeah. Does that mean the faucet stops leaking? No. It just means you're just stopping it from being overwhelming, right? But yeah. eventually it's going to still be overwhelming. It's still leaking. So what I'm trying to say is what I'm saying about like this whole creating your own patterns and stuff, that is a, a just a real solution. You're going to stop the faucet from leaking in general. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? Yes. Yes. It is. Yeah. Yes, because, it is. because you're not going to always have these deadlines. You, that means you have to always be perpetually at, in school or some sort of class. Mm -hmm. You have no mm -hmm. self, <laughs> you have no self reliance on actually just making sure you just do it. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's ultimately what I'm trying to get at. Like you need to like avoid paper towel solutions. Okay. Okay. You yeah. need, you okay. need solutions that will, will change your life and for the better, you know? Okay. So, so going back to this idea of like, you don't have any purpose, then give yourself a simple purpose or give yourself purposes that are already attainable. Something that you can already do. Like hang out with the people you care about. You could do that, right? Like making time for those you care about and those you love. That's not a bad thing to try to aim for, you know? If they and live if, near me. But see, again, like uh, you're, you're, uh, you're creating more problems. You're not thinking of solutions. Of course, oh. of course, if they don't live near you, you can't just go visit them. But why can't you give them a call? Oh. You know, don't think about why it's such a problem. Think about how you can solve the problem. Oh. You know what I mean? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, think about it. Because it, then let's take this back to art. Instead of saying, oh, if I don't have something to do, then I don't know what to do. See, that, that, that philosophy, that mentality is what's causing you your anxiousness, your depression. So stop doing oh. it. <laughs> it's not helping you. You know, it's, it's, oh, it's fine if like, if you have reasons why things are hard, it's okay to talk about why there's challenges in your life. There's nothing wrong with talking about challenges. What's wrong is that you, you recognize there's these challenges and you just don't care. And then you don't care oh. that there's these challenges. And then you feel like, oh, there's so many challenges. And then it starts feeling overwhelming. It's a paper towel solution. It's easy to say it oh. to me. Oh, well, AJ, they don't live next to me. I believe you. My parents don't live next to me either, but yet I still find time. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. I mean, yeah. I don't live in London and yet I'm teaching you, right? I found a way to teach people from all around the world. Uh, this whole mm -hmm. New York thing that we're doing, right? Um, my buddy James, he was like, he's like, holy crap, this is like so much easier <laughs> than I expected. Because he's like, because it, it did really well. We're almost sold out. The event is sponsored mm -hmm. and we have a hotel a venue. Uh, and after party, all booked, mm -hmm. and we didn't spend a dime. And he was shocked. Wow. He was just like, "What the?" He's like, "This is crazy. I didn't think this was that easy." It's like, "Why? Why didn't you think that was this easy?" Now James, I don't think has the same mentality. He's also a very much like, "Yeah, let's make things happen" kind of attitude, right? That's why I reached out to him. You know. Huh. Okay. But imagine if I was to say to him, hey, James, let's do something in New York. He's like, oh, well, I don't know, man. Like, where are we going to get a venue? Where? Like, he would have already created roadblocks. You know what I mean? But the opposite happened. I said, hey, we should do something in New York. He's like, yeah, all right, let's do it. And then I was like, all right, mm -hmm. let's take a look at some venues. He's like, way ahead of you, man. I'm already looking at a couple. And I'm like, oh, all right, cool. You know? And then uh, we uh, got the venue, and he's like, all right, I found a venue. I'm just going to straight up just buy or rent the venue right now before we even have any tickets sold because he's like i feel 100 percent that this is going to work out oh, okay. see it's a, so what i'm trying to say to you is like stop having high expectations be realistic mm -hmm. but also understand that your 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 this mentality can get in the way a lot of times yeah yeah definitely you know what yeah. I mean? Every time you say, like, uh, and I, I was just talking uh, to uh, many other students about this type of things, and every time I'm like, give them a piece of advice, every time I tell them some, a solution, every time I feel like they give me an, another problem, I call that problem makers, not problem solvers. 
So you, hey, I have one problem. This is a thing. You know, how am I going to hang out with people I care about if they are all far from me? So you made a new problem, you know? And so, yeah. so then I gave you, let's say I gave you the solution. So we'll call them. Now you're not, you haven't, you didn't double down, right? You actually immediately understood, oh man, no, AJ's right. Like I could sense that you understood you're kind of getting in your own way a little bit, right? Yeah. Which is good. That's a good step, right? That's really powerful. But imagine if instead you didn't, you didn't have this, uh, this epiphany. Imagine instead you were like, you said to me something along the lines of like, um, <clears throat> oh, but you know, like the, the collect calls and like stacking up the, you know, every time I call someone from far away, you know, it's extra cost. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I'm like, all right, well then use Wi-Fi, do Google Hangouts. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And then you'd be like, well, well, you know, like the time zones. Do you see my point? Like people that talk like this, it's really, really important that they understand that when someone is trying to help them, they should take the help. Right. And if the more they fight back, the more I feel like they kind of are accepting that life is sucky. Right. Because accepting that it's, um, or sorry, they're trying to avoid that life is sucky because if, if they were to accept that life is sucky, then they're not willing to make changes. Because once you accept that there's a lot of rationale to what I'm saying and that you are, you are your own keeper of your own distraught, um, that means that you will have to change something. Something has to change. And uh, humans don't like change. <laughs> you know, we just don't. Yeah. And so... So like, that's what I'm saying, like small goals, give yourself achievable tasks, okay. uh, like talking with people you care about because that helps your mental health, right? Ta mm -hmm. uh, being uh, consistent with your art, that helps you with your artistic health, you know? Okay. Yeah. yeah, think of it like this. If you were to draw every day for just an hour, um, mm -hmm. you, you won't feel as bad if you will say, I don't know, are on your phone for about an hour, right? Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. because you've actually yeah. done the thing you wanted. You've accomplished a very simple task. Yes. But if you do nothing yeah. and you spend mm -hmm. an, a, even like half an hour on your phone, you feel like, oh, crap, you know? And then yeah, especially, especially the distraction that I'm referring to, the phone distraction, you are usually stuck in a perpetual world of looking at um, – um, other people lying about how happy they are, you know? Yes. And so, so yes. it's like this constant f feedback loop of like not being exposed to the reality of things, you know? <clears throat> Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like I said, you know, you, you don't want paper towel solutions and you want to be a problem solver, not a problem maker. Okay. Okay. Think of it yeah. like that. And it's hard, don't worry, like someone in, in your position, um, it's hard to make these types of transitions, okay? Okay. It is. Yeah. And that's why I always tell people, bite size, like do simple stuff, you know? Don't try to yes, do, yeah. yeah, don't try to do crazy, like I'm going to change everything about my lifestyle overnight. I'm going to think seven hours drawing. I'm going to do, you're going to burn out again. It's not sustainable. Uh, uh, so that's why it didn't work last time. <laughs> it will never work because it's not a, okay. it's, 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 I mean, even, even for myself, it just doesn't work out like that. Like, let me, let me give you a good example. Okay. You know, I, um, you know, I'm a, a, a consistent learner. Like I, I'm always learning stuff and one of the things that you know i know about myself is that when i'm into something i get real focused on that you know but that focus isn't always consistent and so so for me to to be like so for instance like when i first started learning programming it was really hard to kind of like to eventually just keep doing it like keep practicing programming you know yeah. just like it's in the beginning it's a lot of fun but when it starts to become harder and harder it becomes less and less fun and so so what i did to combat this 
okay? What I did to combat this was specifically, um, I essentially just made myself program every day for at least two hours. <gasps> wow. Huh. How do you keep up with it, with it though? I'm sorry, say again? How do you keep up with it? Like, I just told myself that I had to do it. And I didn't care that it was only 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there. It was all about just getting that two hours in. And oh. for me, that's much easier to do. For you, you might need to start smaller, like half an hour. There's a really good YouTube video that I saw the guy was talking about. Just do 15 or just start a five minute drawing. Do five minutes every day. And the same philosophy was true with him. And what I loved about his uh, premise, you know, was that he would say like, once you would start drawing after five minutes, right? You just feel like you want to keep drawing. You're like, well, I'm already started. And then so five minutes turns into 30 minutes, 30 minutes then turns into an hour. Okay. It's about getting started is all I'm getting at. Yeah, it's true. And if okay. you're not even getting started, then yeah, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, okay. And so you just need to do that. Yeah. And here, here's the thing too. If you start doing something and you don't feel, uh, you don't feel good about it, like you don't feel like it's working, <coughs> okay, then try something else. Like don't be so hard on your, yourself. Like try something else. You try the, the 30 minutes in the morning, but maybe you just can't wake up in the morning. You know? So you say, okay, either I just need to wake up in the morning, just suck it up, right? Or maybe I should try something else. You know what? What I'll do is I'll put, uh, I'll put a sketchbook right on my Wacom tablet every day. And as soon as I go to my Wacom tablet or Cintiq, I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a sketch. <sighs> problem solver and not a problem maker you know because a problem maker would take a solution or take the situation where they lost and they didn't do well like oh i haven't drawn for several days whatever the hell it is and just be like well it's just not in the cards for me a problem solver would be like oh well you know what like fuck it i'm just gonna figure this out you know maybe i'll do this instead maybe i'll try that instead make sense yeah so yeah. i don't have to stick to one stuff if it doesn't work yeah, don't be so hard. Like, just be consistent. Okay. You know? Okay. And then eventually you'll feel more comfortable. You'll be like, all right, two hours. And then three hours. And then four hours, you know? And then they, you'll start to build, like, a really reliable system of painting and drawing. And you're going to feel oh. so much happier with your life. Yeah. Oh, this helped me a lot. Well, I never thought of it like that. Well, of course you did it because if you did, you might have already been doing well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. No, it, it's 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 a common problem. Don't worry. Like you're not unique in this. Like a lot of people suffer from this type of this type of self um, destructive behavior. You know, yeah, and that's really what it is. It. Yeah. Well, let, let me put it to, to you this way. Like, if you're feeling anxious and you're feeling depressed uh, often yeah. based off of, like, your yeah. actions, you know, yes. then, then you need to change your, your actions. And I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a, 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 you know, mental therapist of any sort. But I do know one thing. Uh, if you keep the same behavior, behavioral patterns in your life, um, there, there, there needs to be change. You know, if you don't make any kind of significant change, you're just going to keep re, uh, revisiting these feelings more than you would want. Oh. 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 oh my God. So that's how it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's how it, that's how it is. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Like if okay. you, if you don't like the way you feel, you just need to work towards it uh, a, a different way of, handling it now i'm not going to say you're going to eliminate it entirely i don't think that's possible especially people who are genetically inclined to be more anxious it's just impossible to get rid of it but there's ways you can manage it you can manage it 
And, and just like anything, you can get good at it. You can get good at managing your, your emotional fortitude. I, I know this because my wife is a very anxious person and being with me for as many years as we have, like she's learned to, to, to relax. And she tells me that because of me, she's been able to really control her anxiety. Yeah, because I'm, I'm much easier, easygoing than she is. And she sees how like I handle situations and she, it's inspired her to, to, to manage herself a little bit better. On the flip side, she's taught me how to be feisty. <laughs> Because I'm, I am a very agreeable person. Um, most of the time, she's taught me how to like be a little bit less agreeable, which is very helpful, especially when you're trying to be, um, you know, a, a business person or an educator, or you want to move mountains. You're gonna have a little bit of like a go get them attitude, kind of like a fighter attitude in a lot of those respects, and so she's helped me with that. Oh, it's the balance. Definitely balance, yeah. I think I got it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. Oh, so that's how it is. Okay. <laughs> any any, other, any other questions? Oh, no, I'm good for now. I'm good for now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, totally. I mean, I have mine is more of a comment, but kind of going off of. Uh, Going off of that. Uh, nope, you're not allowed. There's only one wrong. teacher. <laughs> wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go Damn for it. it. Um, While you're talking, that gives me a chance to drink some of my smoothie. Okay. Um, but basically, like for me, for example, it's always um, withdrawing and getting all caught up on, you know, always sitting on the desk and just sitting around. Uh, I have to force myself to go to the gym. That helps a lot um just any form of physical activity even if it's just like boxing lifting weights or just running a mile or anything like that i, f I feel like just mentally um of course physically it helps a lot um but just like uh, your state your mindset um, i don't know i feel like it, it just becomes way more efficient if you're doing that i think actually you anthony were talking about that um of um if you're always busy, it kind of forces you to, or you keep yourself busy, it forces you to um, be efficient when you're working on the things that you're working on because you're busy, you have other things to, that you have planned to do. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I just have to say that. For me, working out helps a lot. So I don't know if you guys have ever tried that or if it works for you as well. Never. All right, next. Never, <laughs> never have worked out. Yeah, bad, bad <laughs> advice. All right, move on. <laughs> now, I work out, um, I used to work out a lot, mm. um, but I've been working out a lot lately. Mm. Well, the one thing I will say, though, is uh, I kind of mentioned that before, but doing legs or doing shoulders and then having to draw, it's very uncomfortable. Those are the two things that to me are very <laughs> uncomfortable. Now, shoulders doesn't mess me up as much, but definitely legs, um, especially like when I haven't worked out legs in a long time, mm -hmm. I feel crippled. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. When you have to sit down, just sitting down, it, it hurts so bad. Yeah, I um, I, I've been working out and like, yeah, when I did legs uh, two weeks ago, I was just like, I could not walk. Oof. And I, I actively was trying not to go crazy because I've, I've done it before where I'll take a hiatus and not work out for a while and then I'll mm. just just go, go ham. ham. Yeah, yeah. I go like intense. And then once I've done that, I'm like, I can't <laughs> walk like, like for a week, man. I'm like completely <laughs> out of business. Yeah. But I've, um, I was wiser. So this time I worked out I only did like, I only did heavy squats. I didn't do any other leg workout. I didn't do anything else. I just did like five or six sets of legs. And okay. I, what else did I do? I, I think I just walked up some stairs. And then that was it. It was like a half an hour workout. Okay. Maybe 45 minutes. And I still was like out of business for two days. Ooh, yeah. That can definitely only, you. But it was only for two days versus like a whole week. Mm. My wife, she started going back too. And I told her the same thing. I was like, 
I was like, don't go so hard. Like you've been like, you're going a little hard. Mm-hmm. And she's like, well, I want to get back and do it and all that stuff. And then she did it. And then she literally was like unable to walk <laughs> for like yeah. a week too. And then she just stopped working out altogether because she just got like so messed up. And it's like, very oh. uncomfortable. Yeah. I remember I was going to my doctor's appointment mm-hmm. and I was trying to like run <laughs> and, <laughs> and, uh, uh, I couldn't decide to just like walk because I was running late. Have you had that thing happen to you when your legs are super sore and you're trying to walk around and all of a sudden one of your knees just gives gives out, <laughs> just kind of bends back? No, but oh uh, yeah, that, it's horrible. <laughs> I feel like you're gonna fall. I can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> uh, the the one like kind of random trick that helps a lot is if your legs are sore. Uh, it's gonna sound kind of ridiculous, but wear try to wear tight pants or some form of Under Armour uh, leggings. It helps a lot with the soreness. Wait, what? Yeah. So when you're sore, it's just like I mean, obviously it's all the inflammation of the muscle and everything. But if you wear, if you try to put on uh, like tight pants afterwards, like skinny jeans or some uh, Under Armours that are uh, you know like compression tights, uh, that helps a lot with the soreness. Honestly. Compression tights. Yeah, you know, like the the long uh, Under Armour leggings. Yeah, I do know. Yeah, yeah. So we're even just wearing those things underneath, like a, a pair of shorts or some joggers or something, helps a lot. So. All right. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> I'll look into that. Any other questions? like Lance says yes it sucks for airplanes what compression pants <laughs> yeah kind of how come uh yeah it's just like they're tight and it just helps with the blood flow and so when you're wearing them for oh you're saying they help with the airplanes uh no no uh land was saying that uh, the compression the, the idea of the of these compression pants the uh, under armors are almost like the socks for airplanes. They just they're just basically oh, tight. Oh, socks. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The accent doesn't help sometimes. Um, I was actually, if no one else has a question, I was curious about you how you're building up your values for skin tones, uh, sp- especially like the subsurface scattering and all those secondary and tertiary colors that the skin has. How do you approach that? Um. Yeah, I just, I don't think too much about it. I just uh, think about the overall values. Right now, I feel like there's still some adjustment to be made. But overall, I'm always thinking of just values. And I think in this in this painting, there's a lot of vibrant color. Mm-hmm. So I'm like correcting for that. That's what I'm doing right now. I think it's okay, this bottom part is kind of just doing this. But uh, for subsurface, yeah, I just stay within the same value range. Usually, I just change the color. Okay. Gotcha. So, so for instance, right here, like I have this value range. So I can like, if I want this to feel a little more of like a warmer color, I'll probably go somewhere like right here. And I'll just kind of splash it in. Wait, a little bit brighter. But then if you look at it, it's pretty much the same value. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because the values are the most important. Okay, for sure. So, um, but yeah, I can see why it seems like there's something more complicated. But it's not. It's pretty, pretty standard. Get your values right. Making those values work. Yeah. The edge control is the other thing that it's also, I feel like that's what, one of the things that makes you so efficient as a painter is your your edge control with the values. Your edge control. <laughs> I <Yeah>. wish. <laughs> I can still hear my baby, he's supposed to be in bed. Just hear him talking to himself. <laughs> yeah, but anyway. 
Yeah, but this is a great example of like, there's a lot of juice, but ultimately, um, ultimately, uh, this is not like a concept that I would do. This is more of just like my own illustration. Mm -hmm. Anyway, anyway, any other questions? Are you planning on releasing a new art book anytime soon? Maybe, I don't know. I have a lot of images. Would but if I were to do one, I would, I would try to make an art book that would be narratively driven. Okay, you have some of that in Heaven's, in heaven's Hell. I do. I'll just do that again. Okay, that'd be awesome. Yeah, I think it's fun. It's just, it's just the priorities. I'm gonna set priorities yeah, towards that if I wanna do it again. Oh, man. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Like I haven't been resting, just been constantly trying to catch up to sleep. But any anywho, uh, yeah, you know, doing art books is a great way to like build um, build a brand too, because mm -hmm. it gets people to to subscribe to your um, to your artwork. In a more mm -hmm. intimate way, yeah. Right. And yep. was your last one crowdfunded or? It was. Yeah. It was. Okay. So. Yeah, I'll never do it again though, because I failed miserably. Really? Yeah, it was my uh, one of my greatest failures actually. Well, wait. How come? If you don't mind me asking. Yeah, it's just you know how uh, the there's a lot of kick uh, starter people who do kickstarters and they never really deliver. Mm -hmm. I was very much the same way. The um, difference uh, with me, though, I guess, is that I actually refunded everybody that w didn't want to wait for the book anymore. Okay. And, I, and I had a book, and I sent it out to people who did want to wait. But it just was definitely out of scope, and I failed uh, clearly. Mm. That was a whole thing, man. It's like a whole thing. People were trying to ruin my career and type of stuff. Damn. I never yeah. knew of that. Yeah, it was... Like there's still the, the the Kickstarter page, and you can go through the comments, and you can see like people like I never uh, hit any of that because I mm -hmm. honestly believe that it was not a lot. Like some of them was a little a little too personal, but there was some really fair criticism, and I, I felt like you know I always felt that it was it was it was fine that people were very mad. I wasn't uh, I never felt they were wrong. And okay. so, and so I, I was very aware of this, but there, there was still a couple people specifically. There was like one guy who was just like, even at the end of it, because at the very end, I was just basically like, look, it sucks. Like I did, it's not going to happen. Just, mm -hmm. let's just, let's just call it what it is, you know, a complete mm -hmm. failure. And, uh, if you don't want to wait any longer, just get a refund. If you do want to wait, just send me your information. Because even like when people were sending me the information, many people moved away, and even their names were not correct. Some people use different emails now. You know, it's just so wow. long. So I was just like, "Look, if you're reading this and you still haven't got your either refund or book, just email me at this email address, and then you'll get it." Okay. You know, e either or, right? Yeah. And even that wasn't enough for some of these real hardcore people. Like they Fair. just genuinely wanted me to burn. <laughs> And I remember talking to one of the guys about it that was so angry. I was like, why are you so angry, man? Like, what's what's wrong, dude? Mm -hmm. Like, what am I supposed to do, you know, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. I have not yet done? And uh, one of the things I mentioned to him, too, is like, you do realize there's other artists who've done Kickstarters just like myself and have yet to respond to their audiences and have mm -hmm. never even sent a dime to anybody. 
right. and yet you're going you're going all in on me you know mm-hmm. like why <laughs> like it'll be one thing if like this is like your like your your goal is to try to stop people from making these mistakes i would actually respect that but it seems like you i'm the only person you're going after you know yeah it's just like a troll yeah and i was like it seems a little kind of one-sided <laughs> and like i don't know what else i could say to you man and he's just like oh well it's because i backed you i didn't back all these other people i'm like mm. oh okay well i i wonder if uh just a thought but the fact that you're so responsive to everyone on social media in a way it's almost like a double-edged sword that gives trolls the you know like, like the, the thing that the, the power there's a lot of people that seek attention and i give them the attention uh-huh. yeah, yeah that makes sense no i agree with that but uh it's fine i am known for responding to people <laughs> so, man sometimes you reply to people and i'm just like i would have never replied to this person i, I can't believe you like <laughs> yeah i i've completely abandoned like my facebook mostly because facebook's a trash town mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> but, but instagram it's great uh, i respond to almost everybody i don't think mm-hmm. i have one pending message it's all been responded to that's so cool no, I mean, it's not hard. I don't get millions of uh, messages. Maybe if I got like thousands even, uh, mm-hmm. it, it would be a challenge and I probably would have to m- mitigate. Yeah. But I, I don't. I don't get as, lot, as many as you'd think. Hmm. So I just, I think because a lot of people don't think that I would respond. I think that's probably why. Uh, or they don't, they feel afraid that I might judge them or something. <laughs> Which, you'll post them on your social media like this person sucks they, they're right to me oh uh, no are. yeah so i'm, I'm a big uh, i'm a big advocate against that like yeah. i see this happen with my 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 contemporaries i see people will post like the cancel listen, culture yeah i don't like cancel culture and i yeah. like i have like, i've even experienced it a little bit like with the kickstarter stuff mm. but but it was like not even at the level it is these days but anyway um yeah what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, like, no, I'm not a fan of, like, okay, so for, let me give you a great example. Like, sometimes people will reach out to an artist and be like, hey, you know, um, I, I want to work with you, like, and, like, do this stuff for free. Like, like, you know, we can give you money at the end. We can give you some exposure, <laughs> right? And so mm-hmm. that, I'm not a fan of that, but I'm also not a fan of when my friends will post what these people have said. Mm, right? yeah um because i don't like i if they uh what you call it if they you know hide their names or they get rid of all these like other factors so it's completely anonymous mm-hmm. i think that's that's still still problematic and the reason why is because that person would know right you know right. Uh, i think you could do it in a way that's indirect you can just tell people don't do that <laughs> you know yeah like you could just make a post about it and that person might know, but at least you didn't like put them to blast on everything that they said. Right. You know, because sometimes some of these people don't know. They just don't have education on why it's, it's kind of rude to just ask that. And yeah. there's nothing wrong with not knowing. There's something wrong with uh, not teaching. So th- I get this all the time. Right? I actually get messages that, hey, let's work on something free. And I respond to them, like oh, even recently, someone's like sent me an image in my Instagram, mm-hmm. and then they were like, "Yeah, I'll, 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 uh, I'll read you what they said. I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna I'll stop recording, just to stay on brand." Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is Zoom recording? Um, yeah. So they they essentially just sent me an image, and they're like, "Hey, can you like?" Uh, can you do a paint over right like can you give me some feedback okay. uh, like draw over it right now okay. i don't i don't do that like when people ask me for like hey what do you think i will give them that because i can do that really easily i can re- record a voice or i can just do s- speech to text it actually only takes like like a minute of my time really okay. it's not really that big of a deal you know i can okay. tell them oh work on anatomy work on perspective whatever right right like just the kind of stuff that I tell you guys, but just in an even shorter form, right? And right. like no paint over of it, any kind. Because that's what I do. Like I'm an educator. Mm-hmm. I don't give that stuff out for free. If we're at like at a workshop or if we're at an event, it's a little bit different, right? It's a very special moment. Right. But like just on the internet, it's not. Like, that's not what I'm about, I'm about right? 
Mm-hmm. And so uh, I wrote to him. I said, I was like, he's like, unfortunately, I can't give you any kind of painting demo or give you any advice in that sort because this is what I do professionally, you know. Mm-hmm. But if you want me to give you some just words of advice, what you think you can improve upon, I can give you a couple, you know. Okay. And he's like, but uh, I can tell you right now, it's a pretty good drawing. That's okay. it. That's all I wrote. Okay. So now along those lines, paraphrasing. And then, uh, and then he he wrote back. He said, oh, what the? I didn't even think you were going to respond. And he was mm. super happy. He was like, yeah, I totally respect the man. He was like, didn't mean to imply, you know, or like assume that you would just do it, you know? Right. And I was like, yeah, no, no worries. Dude. I'm going to keep on drawing, you know? Yeah. Um, so what, 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 is, what is great about this? This person leaves with a positive, you know, positive uh, experience with an artist that they, they admire. You know, mm-hmm. they learn a little bit about like maybe the etiquettes of like reaching out to artists, mm, you know, yeah. without getting uh, canceled, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's people that have done the same thing, like with like, oh, I'll give you exposure. And I said, he's like, he's like, unfortunately, I don't do things for exposure. The project looks cool. Uh, here's some <laughs> piece of advice. I would re- I would think most artists would respect that you would give them even a, a portion of money up front. Uh, and that you should be, you know, you should also recognize that what you're asking them to do takes time. And so if you can't afford a lot of that time, then try to think of how much you can afford and pay them for that. Mm. You know, like if you yeah. can't, if you can only afford someone's like hourly rate of like $50 an hour, let's say, and you can only really afford uh, four hours of their time. then I said, do one hour of having them do sketches and variations for you, just real rough. Mm-hmm. then you pick one and then you make them spend the rest of the time just refining it and you just got to deal with, you just got to be happy with whatever they give you yeah <clears throat> you know right and uh people respond to that really well they're like oh thanks for that you know you're right like i should should do that it's just uh you know i don't have any money right now and all that stuff and he's like yes yeah, and i said i agree it's like but w- let me flip it like would you if someone came to you and asked you to spend six or 16 to 17 hours of your time to do something with the hopes of something like you probably wouldn't right so right. you just got to respect that that's probably what the case is and you know is you don't want to build a bad relationship with these people too they're going to potentially get real resentful when they start to realize there's never going to be a prospect uh, yeah. i also and i also mentioned to them is like you if you do feel like you still think this is a good option then you should you should also make it very clear to them that their artwork is theirs. So you're more licensing it than like using it for your own IP. Um, but if, if you want it to be yours, you have to pay for it. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> I didn't think of that. Yeah, because at least like if I'm doing something for free, if right. it's mine, I can share it on my Instagram, I can post it, I can make a tutorial on it, whatever mm-hmm. that I want. I, I can right. use it. The problem right. really becomes, it becomes a real problem if like, I can't even use the artwork because of some sort of crazy NDA. Right. For something that was potentially even free to do. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a great way to do that. Um, to kind of get work from somebody uh, without having so many, like, of a, so much of a headache. Yeah. I'm just actually writing that down. <laughs> yeah, I think there's ways to tell people to fuck off without mm-hmm. <laughs> telling them to fuck off. You know? Yeah. Like that's essentially what I'm saying. I'm just being really polite about it. You know, and I'm and I'm also like, you know, I don't know these people. Like I don't know their circumstances. I don't know the reason why they feel that this is okay, you know? Mm-hmm. Like I give I'm I give people quite a bit of benefit of doubt before I totally write them off. Before I actually quite literally to their face tell them to fuck off. And I've done that before. You might not believe it, but it's very rare <laughs> that I have done it. But it, it yeah. takes a lot. You have to genuinely prove to me that you're a genuine jerk. Right. And then I have no patience. Right. It's just a waste of your time, basically. Yeah. Um, but it takes a lot. It takes quite a bit. I only can think of a few artists in our industry that have made me come to this this extreme measure. <laughs> But I feel like a lot of my friends, like, I don't know. I, I think a lot of times people feel justice needs to be said. So they go after these folks. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, 
But at the end of the day, it ends up, uh, I mean, just my perspective, but I feel like it ends up just kind of spreading more toxicity within the the, the industry or, or the, the yeah. circles. So. And I'm not going to say that I'm immune to this too. I've, I've shared my fair share of like talking crap. Oh, yeah. For but it's just, yeah. yeah, but it's just the, I, I realize it's probably best to reduce it. And mm-hmm. it only matters. It's the, it's the, the boy who cried wolf right sensibilities like if you're if you're complaining about everything then nothing you say seems to hold legitimacy with me right because it seems you're looking for it right there's definitely things to be upset about but if that's all you're uh, focused on yeah it becomes a problem anyway let's see if anyone else has any questions but the wrap up soon any other questions y'all you guys feel content it's okay. What I mean, th- I sorry. So. That sorry. My my mom. <laughs> Tell her to get out. Get out of here, mom. Yeah. I mean, she's super. She's super loud. Like I'm in the office, and she just walked in through the entrance of the office. You can hear her walking. Just talking. <laughs> yeah. Where where, where 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 are you guys? What's your ethnicity? Uh, where I'm from Venezuela, so Latino. Oh, okay. So a lot of yelling. You know, Latin fire. Yeah, it sounds like we're fighting, but we're just casually talking. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Um, H- how is Venezuela? I don't know anybody oh, from Venezuela. Who man. Uh, bad. I mean, I'm here requesting political asylum. <laughs> wow. So, yeah, the country. I'm from Caracas, which is the capital. And that uh-huh. is officially the most dangerous city in the world. Cool, we, dude. Yeah, super <laughs> cool. Um, with uh, the highest inflation rate in the world too Um, so much so that uh, (coughs) the currency of the country is not even uh, because I have friends over there still the currency of the country is not even used by the people there anymore they're using American dollars now because the currency is is empty basically it's not worth it wait where are you at right now uh, I'm in Colorado. I'm between Colorado and California, like kind of going back and forth right now. Oh, I see. So you got political asylum. That's what you meant. Uh, well, yes. yeah, it's a kind of complex situation, but yeah, the, long story short, that's what Wh- Where did you get the asylum? Uh, so yeah, that's the thing. I, the, I applied for asylum uh-huh. and then because the government in this country, especially with the current political situation, <laughs> uh, it takes... What are you talking about? Yeah, right. <laughs> There's no situation, dude. There's no situation. We're perfectly fine. <laughs> Everything's fine, dude. Everyone's cool. Yeah, especially told, Latinos too. Yeah, we definitely like love brown people, dude. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh so because of that, um basically what happens is if you apply to asylum and you don't uh-huh. hear back within a couple of years, mm-hmm. then you're allowed to work in the US and, and have your social security and do all of that while you're waiting cool. for asylum still. So that's where I'm at. Nice. Um, yeah, so I'm like fine working and everything, but I can't I can't go back to my country because yeah, I just I, I legally cannot. Well, I mean, technically, you're a criminal and a rapist, as far as I remember. I know, right? At least one of those. I'm not sure and, which one. I'll figure and, it out later. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. And the funniest thing too is that people, most people don't even know where Venezuela is anyway. So when I tell them I'm from Venezuela, Central America, some, right? uh it's uh right next to colombia and brazil yeah so, so it's definitely yeah. in the uh, central yeah right, i just don't know exactly where uh, no yeah that, that's fair it's a tiny country um but like a lot yeah. of people assume it's europe or they assume i say minnesota so <laughs> uh my wife's from nicaragua oh is she yeah so she's from central america too oh so she's and her, her her yeah her um yeah um so she she fled um uh, she fled too, but it was during the Contra Wars. Oh, okay. I think it was Reagan. That was Reagan's good old Republicans hating on yeah. the brown people, dude. <laughs> straight out, of the, wait, straight really? out of the playbook. I didn't know that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, the the war on drugs, all that stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, our country was pissed because we found out that we were like, um, we were supplying the... Um, the the terrorists with weapons is we're really good at doing this right and so uh and then so then so the country that became completely 
Yeah, that's what's happening now in, in your guys' country. Uh-huh. Like I was talking to somebody about this. They were like, like, because he was like, well, we're sending them like supplies and we're feeding them. They're like, the, the president is blocking this stuff from coming in. And I was like, if you know anything about American history, especially to Latin America, like, are you sure it's food and, and shit? Because yeah. in previous <laughs> events, we did not send food and shit. Mm-hmm. And let me, let me go down the list. You know, the Iraq war, right. the Syrian war, right. uh, the Contra wars, right? Mm-hmm. The, the, uh, the drug cartels. Like we are actually constantly sending quote unquote supplies. Mm-hmm. Especially uh, with oil, when there's oil involved. Yes. And so I'm like, I was like, you gotta like, you gotta, res- you gotta look at like, American history, man. We're not, we're definitely arms dealers. And so, mm-hmm. in fact, I feel like, I feel like if you ever become president and then like they show you like all the stuff, like all the secrets, like the actual real stuff, mm. you're just kind of like, the, our whole government is built on the deck of a house of cards, like the TV show. Oh, yeah. Like in a real like sense, like if we were to stop doing a lot of these things that all of us Americans look out, out on the surface of, like, oh man, this is terrible. This is obvious, ter- obviously terrible. Mm-hmm. If we were to stop doing that, I have a strong belief that it would destroy our economy. <laughs> you know, yeah, I believe that. Like it's sure. like we've built it on you know these really terrible, terrible systems, and there's mm-hmm. only one way around it. You know, which is complete and utter just capsizing of our current uh, system. You know, right, right. And uh, when uh, if there was never a, a sense that this was true, it was during the high housing collapse in America. Mm. like when we we re- recognized that all of that was just like wall streets just going off and on like selling and trading like without any real regulation or any accountability mm-hmm. and then when that was completely destroyed we like we had like bail them out and people again were like hey what the why are you bailing out wall street but it was like the same premise of if we didn't it would have been real bad right uh, and my opinion about that is that we kind of might have to make it really bad <laughs> you know <laughs> because it's it doesn't then justify all the other bad you know like sure there's going to be a lot of americans they're going to have a lot of struggles and suffer and including mm-hmm. myself i'm sure it's going to affect me uh, right. and people that i know but we shouldn't be killing innocent people and we shouldn't be like starting coups and uh, you know basically fueling terrorist activity and yeah. it's just like we got to stop and so um a lot of central american and South American uh, countries are really affected by American policies. People don't know this, but it just is true. And yeah. we got to stop. We got to let these countries sort themselves out. Same thing with the Middle East. Uh, it's going to be a lot of terrible things are going to happen. But <clears throat> long, 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 like you know, long story short, yeah. like we got to we got to do a little bit of a hard reset, and it's 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 just building up more and more tension, it's right? Like a, like we're winding up something that's going to be potentially terrible because I think it's going to happen regardless, mm. but it's like, at least maybe we can have a controlled wildfire, not a uncontrolled wildfire. Does that make sense? I see. Yeah, that does make sense. Like we're preparing for it. Like even like people that I like, like po- political, uh, uh, like um, people that are running for president mm-hmm. that I, I strongly believe in, like, uh, Sanders, a- Andrew Yang. I still feel like once they get into office, if they do get into office, they're gonna see all of this through. Like, they're gonna be like, "This is a mess." And I yeah. feel like I feel like uh, if Bernie gets in, he's gonna tell us. He's gonna be like, "Yo, everything about our government is a complete yeah. and utter it's in shambles." <laughs> and then he's just like, and then someone's gonna shoot him because he's like unveiling all of the stuff. Right. It's funny. It's funny because even uh, as much as I hate our current president he's kind of like revealing all of this stuff accidentally <laughs> <laughs> yeah just by like, all his rants <laughs> yeah, because he just doesn't know how to shut up and so <laughs> so he's just like kind of like just showing how bad it is and it's it's kind of it's kind of beautiful um in its own way but anyway, maybe in a way that's part of the control fire you're talking about <laughs> yeah no, it's definitely not in control. There's a bunch of kids yeah. in cages, dude. The, yeah. My uh, oh, my wife, if she would have came during that time, she mm-hmm. would be in a cage. That's just how it oh, is. Oh, yeah. I mean, my same with my girlfriend, actually. She's from, from Mexico, too. So Yeah, she would be in a cage, for sure. Mm-hmm. Because my, my wife came when she was six with 
her aunt and okay. some strangers. Damn. So they wow. Well, so they, so they would have separated her for sure. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And so, but again, it's you know, she had like she was running from, um, like her mom was like recruited to become a terrorist, and her mom's like, yeah, I don't want to do that. And so she she left before her. It was crazy. Yeah. It's a crazy yeah. story. It's very inspiring. But um, wow, that's the thing people here never realize. I've I've experienced that myself when they say, "Well, if you're applying for asylum, just do it legally and wait." Some, <laughs> some people don't have that luxury. <laughs> yeah, like, that's so funny, man. Like, oh, just do it legally. Yeah, okay, I might be dead tomorrow though. So, yeah, these are the know. same people. These same people that have this argument are the same people who hate the DMV. <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> yeah the That's same people that don't get point. their tags registered because it's a fucking thing it's like <laughs> all right man and so anyway that's funny yeah <laughs> all right any, any other questions before we get too intense oh. <laughs> i feel like we, we've been talking too much can, yeah. can you guys think of any other questions my friends please please anything I'm looking at you michael do you have anything or did michael leave you went to sleep I can make some. I can make something happen. <laughs> put words into questions. All right, cool. Uh, it, it involves a brief demo, if you would show. Uh, me anyone else? Uh, I'm see. just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, sure. What's up, man? Okay. And uh, granted, you already answered the brushes question. I just want to ask if you could show me how you would approach painting like a robot with the spacing brush. The spacing brush? Yeah. The oh, the one with the more spacing? spacing? Got it. Yeah, I, I've been messing with it, and I I think it's really nice for, like, organic, but hard surface, I'm like, wait a minute, maybe I should just use the other one. But then I, yeah. I'm remembering what you said, and you, you're like, it doesn't matter, bro. You're full. doesn't matter, dude. You're full. And I'm you like, are right, full. Prove it. prove it. You are full, and it doesn't matter. All right. Oh. Next question. I'm just kidding. Yeah, give me a second. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, by I the just... way, this painting's beautiful. You're nice beautiful. These are great colors, dude. You're beautiful. Nah. nah. <laughs> All right. Oh, the premiere of your uh, video on YouTube is doing pretty well, by the way. Duh, dude. Duh, expanding that YouTube sphere. All right. Let me save this. Uh, I just wanted to mention real quick. Have you ever oh thought about merch? Oh my god! I know. I talk a lot. Sorry, man. I do have merch. Just nobody How dare buys you. it. <laughs> right. Wait, you do? <laughs> All right. Anyway, moving on. Like I'm just saying, a shirt with a design like this would be amazing. You're amazing. You, he did do uh, some merch, some like shirts and stuff, but I don't think it promote didn't uh, promote it very much. Mm. Hey, don't put it on me. He wanted to do the. the don't put it on me. <laughs> I know all the beats, bro. I it's, know it's everybody else, beats. not me. Everybody else has a problem. I don't have a problem, dude. <laughs> <laughs> my work's Maybe amazing. Give me better tools. <laughs> yeah, my work's amazing. Everyone else is not. They don't get it, dude. They don't get my work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I uh, I don't do the kind of work that does well as merch, um, in in a high capacity. So I have like a uh, what you call it, like um, I have a um, a niche audience mm. and niche artwork, so. That combination is usually not good. If I were to make, like, I think I have to make niche products, like uh, graphic novels or um, art books, this type of stuff. Because an art book is niche. It's only other artists want art books. And for what I do and teach, it makes sense. Okay, fair it enough. makes perfect sense. You're fair enough. <laughs> I try. So you're in Colorado right now? Uh, right now, yeah. So when do you when do you, when are you in LA? When does that happen? 
uh, it was probably gonna be early next year. So I was planning on going like February or March, um, around there. We should do a Colorado event. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. That would be amazing. This is all you gotta do. You gotta look at, um, well here, let me, let me see what's up. So flight from LAX to Colorado. It's like 150, I think. Well, it's even cheaper. Where where in uh, Colorado are you? Denver. Are oh, that's super cheap. Then. According to this, it's like 90 bucks. Oh, awesome. Yeah, it's super cheap. So, <clears throat> so the next question is, how much would it cost to stay at a hotel in Denver for like three to four nights? Mm. $29? What the? All right. Uh, Denver... Hotels. So I'm looking at, yeah. So we're looking at like even cheap, cheap nights too. The Sheridan is like a hundred bucks, mm -hmm. seventy-five at the courtyard. So like average out around a hundred bucks a night. So if we were to stay four nights, it'd be like five hundred dollars probably. And so then um, add the flight at six hundred dollars. Six hundred, mm -hmm. seven hundred dollars. Let's just put at seven hundred at a higher capacity. And then next, you just need a venue for a whole day. That can also cost about six hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. And if you were just to fly me out, right? So that would be between twelve hundred dollars. And if we were to do a fifty dollar price uh, entry fee, you only need twenty four people. Mm -hmm. But yeah. we could bring more people. If we did like two thousand, we can probably bring more people. Right, and mm -hmm. then do the same thing. You get the forty. That's where we get the forty from. Damn. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, I'm sure there's people in Denver. So what we did is that we just create a mailing list, and we will see how many people will sign up, and then based off of that, we try to budget if it was even possible. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna look around. Yeah, I know there's some artists here for sure. If there's no, uh, if, <laughs> if there's no cost of the venue because um, sometimes uh, schools will just offer their their school right you can just borrow it then that's uh, dope right yeah that would be amazing yeah so then that reduces the cost dramatically hmm. yeah i don't okay. know who lives yeah, out there but i can i can do a post it on my instagram facebook yeah you gotta, you gotta do some of the groundwork you gotta tell me like what's available what are the costs share this information with me or mike and then we'll start okay. doing the planning and this is this is true for all of you guys even if you're out of country and and even some schools are even willing to send or like sponsor the event like they'll fly out all the artists they'll um they'll hold on to uh, that like sponsorship. They're like, you know, they'll do everything, all that work. I'm trying to see if a uh, school over here will do that. Yeah, and then it's like, then it's just about who we, we want to bring out rather than logistics. But it's, again, it's, it's easier than you might think. I mean, it doesn't sound complicated the way you broke it down just now. It sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah, remember like, just the solutions people tend to not think about the stuff they become problem makers like i was mentioning earlier with lon right like think it through and you'll be like no this is poss possible so i was thinking about like the one-on-ones so the first problem that i was running into is like organizing organizing like how do i get people like how do i organize that right like that's mm -hmm. a lot of people like potentially like overbooked even if it's like five people, that's a lot of people to like organize and coordinate with. Mm -hmm. It's not like a class where I can like bulk organize, you know? Right. Um, just get all you guys' emails and just send out like a large email and then get you guys all on a Skype group. This is going to be different. This is like, we're all going to meet up. Like I'm going to have like a virtual office, which is the Zoom meeting, right? And then we meet up there and then I do the thing and then the next person comes in. Like, how do I organize that? <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah. And so I found a I found a thing. I just researched. 
And there's, oh. ar there's already a website that does it. And you can book one-on-ones. It's already, it's already up too, but I just, uh, I'm waiting for a good time to actually launch it. Oh, wow. Yeah. But it's as, it's as simple as, um, here, let me see if I can find it. I sent it to Mike. So he has a test version of it. Oh no, he has the real version. Yeah, it's not a test version. This is the one that's launched. So you could, you could pick a session, right? You could like, mm -hmm. you know, I want to hang out with AJ for 30, 30 minutes. He'll give me a paint over a review. Give me some advice like a kind of just a short session mm -hmm. hangout you pick your time zone so that way you know when it's good for you so it's according to your time zone not so much mine but i just a lot times and then you just book oh wow that's cool and then on my end on the back end like i can see like who who it is and where it is mm -hmm. and then they'll they'll uh there's a link to the zoom meeting Mm -hmm. on the, the, in the in the email so you just click on that when it's your time and I can send reminders and I can actually move your appointment too if I feel like there's an overlap for like something I forgot about mm -hmm. and then it will let you know it's like it's all done through this app it's super easy does it prevent you from booking same day uh no they they can't do it because someone else books then that time is slotted right and if I have um if I have something booked, it's synced to my calendar. Okay. So then when I go to my calendar, it will show me that someone has something going on. And then even from there, I can like reschedule their meeting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay, that's interesting. Because I, I, I had the concern of what if you're like, you didn't have anything booked, let's say 4 p.m. And then uh, it's like 2 p.m. And you're like, oh, well, there's nothing today. So then you go do something else. Maybe hang out with your family. And then somebody booked that time that, uh, an hour in advance, and you're just like, "Oh, wait a minute, whoops." No, I think I could put a 24-hour booking uh, delay, so you can't. Yeah, book. that would be that would be ideal. Yeah, so you can't book the same day. That's what you meant, and then that's yeah. what, that's exactly right. Um, I don't think it's like immediate. I mean, we can even test it. Um, so if I were to say I wanted to book today, which is right now, right? Oh no, Wednesday, right? Oh yeah, can't. Can't. So I think I already have it. All right, that's good. I think I can even set it further out too. Like you can't book for two days or whatever. But I think one day is fine. I'm not that fucking lucrative in my time. But one thing that I'll have to start doing uh, better is uh, book, like put on my calendar when I'm not available. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So that way people won't accidentally book. Because how will they know? So I have to like block those days and those times. Um, but anyway, yeah, so I did a I did a robot. Yeah, I've been watching. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I kind of see that it's uh, kind of my interpretation is it leans back to just really good shapes. You son of a bitch. You're a son? Well, no, actually, your mom's, your mom's great. You're a son of a good person. <laughs> you son of a good person. All right. All righty. I'm going to go now, guys. It's been a pleasure. Okay. Yeah. It's been an honor. Thank you guys for taking my class. I appreciate you all. I'll see you guys around. Keep up the good work. Remember, let's try to save up money. Go to at least one, one event a year if you can. Um, and, you know, do your best to keep putting your stuff out there, showing it, making friends connect. Don't be strangers to the people you've made friends with in this class either, you know. Try to get each other's contact information of some sort. Keep in touch. You know, you never know. And with that being said, peace out, friends. I'm rolling out. Thank Later, you. Guys. Thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. Please subscribe to watch more in the future. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you like this content, you can go to my website, robotpencil.net, where you can find mentorships, tutorials, and a Patreon to get more exclusive content. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next videos.